So at this point, we um, are starting to get an idea of what's required to create cross-platform projects. We have the Taco software, we have emulators. Next time we will be talking about setting up a real device. I'll have a handout for that if you don't have a real device. Um, we have the virtual devices. We have that one that I recommended for sale. I have to confirm then if we will be able to get if I will be able to check out some of these tablets or not, but we'll, we'll see. Most likely we will. Um, for the moment, I've given you two, hand, two and a half handouts. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to... Uh, let's see, we can uh, close the program files folder for the moment. You can leave that emulator running if you want. Mm. Okay, the the project we created, my app. Let's explore a little bit more about what's in that folder. Um, I created it on the desktop, and this that we created is just a test project for today. It's not mission critical. We're we're not gonna we're gonna discard it when we finish today. If you want to keep it, you can, but it doesn't have anything that meaningful just yet. When we come back next time, then we will create a real version of the project and work on it for real. We will import what we started with last month. We'll get to that eventually. Let's open up this my app uh, project. in the WW folder, which makes sense. That's our original HTML and JavaScript code and such. We will be mo doing most of our work there. Um, let's look for a moment in this res folder. I believe it stands for resources. Let's look at the res folder. Open that up. And here is the place where we would be adding the icon and splash screen of our app. Right now, our app has that basic Cordova mascot icon. We would want our own icon, of course, and we'll have a full lesson about it. But if you open up icons folder, here is where we would, we would put in the icons if we were targeting Android, iOS, Windows, or Windows 8, Windows Phone 8. We're on Android, so if we open up the Android folder, here are the four icons that I would need for the different kinds of Android devices. We have the low DPI <laughs> device, the medium DPI device, the high DPI device, and the extra high DPI device. Every mobile platform has this range, this evolution, that an Android phone a few years ago had a certain quality to the screen, and now the newer ones have a higher quality. So we have different sized icons for different devices. These are plain old pings, and we'll have a lesson later, but if you think about it, if you want to explore this by the time we come back next time, you can go in and edit any of these icons, and that's going to edit the icon of your, of your app. We'll have a lesson and a handout about it, but here I'm showing you, eventually, we're going to need to design four sizes of icons, square icons. Again, not only are we going to deal with the code, which a lot of us are comfortable with, we're going to need to also deal with graphics which a lot of us probably are not, because a lot of us that perhaps have a mentality or a, bra a brain for coding and such and logic might not have a brain for art and design and such, and that's okay. We're going to be using Photoshop, and I'm going to show you some tricks, tips, and tricks, tips and tricks to make graphics. You don't have to be a graphics pro, but we do want to make our own icons and design for our app, or else we'll, we'll, all our apps will look exactly the same, the generic Cordova icon. And that'll be even worse when you upload it to a real app store. Your app, app, app icon will look like a generic, you know, out-of-the-box Cordova app. So we will edit that later. If you want to explore over on the iOS folder, these are the different size of icons if you're going to do iOS. A lot more because iOS has had the basic sized icons and then their retina sized icons, which are double the size. So a 2x size. These are all the different size icons for iOS if I wanted to target iOS eventually, which we will, but we'll get to that. If I wanted to create a Windows Phone version of my app, I would go there. and They have a couple different sizes. 
and then if I wanted to create the Windows version. With Cordova, we can create a classic app that you would get for your computer. Just like I've got Chrome installed, just like I've got QuickBooks installed, those classic apps, just like I've got Photoshop installed, with Cordova we can create apps like that with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. It's much more complexity. But we can create desktop apps for Windows 8 and up. Not for Windows 7, not for Windows XP, for Windows 8 and up. Same thing with the Mac. Um, but we're seeing in the folder that here are the various icons for a Windows 8 app. With the wide tile and the square, etc. We'll change these later. Backing up. Screens. If you look in your Screens folder. In your Screens folder. These are for the splash screens. Oftentimes when you load an app, you have a little bit of a of a graphic, some sort of stationary graphic or some sort of animation, something that displays momentarily, then the app loads. For example, every time I load up Twitter, I get the little Twitter bird for a moment, and then Twitter starts. That's their splash screen, something to look at while the app loads. While the app loads into memory and gets ready, look at something. These are the splash screens. In Android, we have horizontal and vertical splash screens. <laughs> Our app is going to be set up that we can have it be a vertical app or a horizontal app or both. If it's a game, most likely we want horizontal for more space. If it's an app like the one we're going to do in the class, it'll most likely be vertical. So if a person launches the, the app uh, and they're holding their phone vertically, it'll show a vertical graphic. We have the high DPI version, the low DPI version, medium DPI, and extra high DPI portrait orientation. If we're going to target a tablet or a horizontal device, well, we're going to have a splash screen that will load up horizontally. So it's the same thing, just tilted. And this, in this case, it's just got the basic Cordova little app. Um, mascot. If you want to view it, you can right-click preview. If you double-click it, it opens in fireworks, I guess. We don't, we don't want that. You want to right-click preview. Let's just show you that's, that's what's going to load up before your app loads. Yes, I can go into Photoshop or whatever and edit this and make it my own. And we will have an activity later where we do create a splash screen. A little bit of branding to show our app before it starts up. But on a technical level, the, the splash screen often is visible first because stuff is, going behind, stuff is going on behind the scenes before the app is ready to go. So we want to show the user something <coughs> while the app gets ready. And same thing, you can go look at iOS and all those. At some other point, you get the idea. There's a, you can, this is, the point of this is you can have different icons for all the platforms. Because if you look at the style of an Android app, it's got a certain kind of color palette, certain kind of gradients, certain kind of design. iOS apps, maybe the exact same app exists on Android and iOS. Like let's say the, the McDonald's app is both for, for iOS and for Android, but the design is a little bit different per platform because each one has its own style, its own operating system aesthetic. So that's why we have the ability to create icons and design for each platform. We just have to deal with Taco Build Android, and it compiles the, the, the code for all the platform, for the Android. We will be able to compile all the platforms with one simple command later, but we can differentiate our app. Same starting point, output, and compiled to all the platforms. You go back to res, don't worry about native for the moment. Just go back to the root level of your folder. Plugins, look at that very briefly. That's the folder where the camera plugin was installed. It's got its own code there residing, and you never really have to look inside of this folder at all. But it shows that this, plat this app 
has the camera and the whitelist plugins installed. I would not simply delete the camera folder to uninstall the camera plugin because there is code attached in other parts of the project. Later on in the at, in the in our in the life cycle of our project, if we actually did not want the camera feature of our device on our project, we would type um, taco plugin remove Cordova dash plugin dash camera. You don't need to do it now, but later on we can easily add taco plugin add features. We can remove features. Toggle plugin remove. And the point of this is if you follow my handout exactly, there's a spot in here that says type this to install 20 plugins. And there's plugins like the camera, vibration, splash screen, geolocation, etc. There's plugins in there that we will not need for our final app. There's too many plugins. It's making our project too big. Plus, these are permissions. If you're going to go download a brand new app, it says this app would like to use your camera, would like to see your contacts, would like to see your memory card. Permissions. We can activate those permissions via plugins. If we've activated all 20 of, our, of these possible plugins, and we're creating a calculator app, someone's going to download our calculator and say, why does this calculator need to use the camera? Why does this calculator need to use the microphone? This is going to spy on me. So that's why we're going to need to learn how to remove plugins later. You don't simply delete the folder here and it's done. It still has code laying around. Uh, platforms. Um, eventually, as we compile and build our apps, the compiled version of the project gets saved here. We'll, we'll get back to it in detail, but let's take a quick look here. Open platforms, open Android, open build, open outputs, Open APK. I'll have this on a handout later, of course. There is our project. Android debug.apk. That is the file that eventually we would upload to the App Store. All of the separate stuff gets compiled into one file. It's our debug version of our project. The App Store wouldn't accept it anyway. It wants the final signed, compiled, official app, which we'll do later. But all of that all of that got compiled to a to a little 294 kilobyte file, a, a quarter of a megabyte file. That's my whole app combined into one file. And then later on, we'll also encrypt it so that people don't steal your code. But inside of that folder, deep in the project, is the final version of our of our app, the debug version. So we'll just back out of it. Let's go back up to. The, <coughs> Go back up to the root level of the project. Merges. If we look in the merges folder, here is where we can do something very cool. We can write platform specific code. Back at the WW folder, this is the code that every platform will get. This code will apply to an iPhone and to a Nexus. But inside of platforms, we can differentiate. We can add code that will only run on an Android device, code that will only run on, a, on an iPhone device, code that will only run on a browser. We'll deal with that later, but inside of Android, here then, in, the, in this WW folder, we could have specific code. We can have code specifically for Android. This code here will not show up in the other devices. Hooks for the moment is way too complex. Don't worry about it. This is to add extra functionality to 
to your app. This is like to build your own. This is to build your own plugins, sort of. So this is pretty complicated. Don't worry about hooks for the moment. Then we get these other items here: package.json and taco.json. We'll talk about JSON files later, but don't worry about what's in them just yet. These are openable up in Notepad if you want, but at the moment there's nothing really to look at them. Don't quite worry about them. The one we'll look at for a moment as we wrap up the day is config.xml. Right-click config.xml. This is one of the most important files, and this is one of the files that, that makes the magic of Cordova, the magic of Taco, the magic of, of, uh, of, of PhoneGap. Right-click config.xml. XML is a variation of HTML. Um, short answer is that XML is made up of tags that we invent and give meaning to, whereas HTML is a set of predefined tags that exist and already have a meaning. XML, we can invent our own tags. Here, in this XML file, the w3.org organization has defined what do these tags mean. So we have this XML tag at the top, line 1, and we have widget. Widget tag starts all the way on 95, widget tag ends. Everything inside of widget basically defines the guts of my app. Line 2 further has a bunch of attributes. So it's like HTML and then it has a tag, attribute, and a value. Does this look a little familiar here? My handout says, when we create a project, so don't type this, but if we were in the command prompt, we did taco, create, my amazing app. Then I would need app space quotes, my amazing app. That's what my handout says. Don't type it here. But that's what my handout says. If you're going to create a brand new project, you would use Taco to create a project folder, give it a unique ID, and then an icon name. Here is where we can edit that unique ID if we didn't set it properly. This testing project that we're working on, we don't need to edit this, but if we never typed this Taco command, here is where we would change that. For a little bit of practice, let's change it. Line 2, delete what's in the quotes, You don't need a real website, but you need some I unique identifier. Com dot your last name dot my app. Our current app testing project is my app. So if I was uploading a calculator, and there's already a thousand calculators in the App Store, this is what differentiates my calculator from the other 999. My unique .com name right here. It's a reverse domain name. You don't have to have a real domain. But if I have, so I have a real website, vmcinc.net. I would put net.vmcinc.myapp. That's what identifies it uniquely from everyone else's app. There's a version number of our app, 001. That can be changed to whatever we want as we work on our project. Don't worry just yet. This XML file is defined by this organization, the W3. What else here? XML CDV. I don't remember what that one is, but there's cordova.apache.org. Okay, well it's just more, I think that's the namespace. Don't worry about what it is, it just says this is a Cordova project. Name. That's the text that appears below the icon. We never set an icon name, which was, if we did taco create my amazing app ID quotes icon name, we never did that. So we can set it right here. My app. I can of course write a name of an app as long as I want, but remember that you've got this limited space on the app screens for iPhone, Android, whatever. You have 
you're sharing space with your fellow icons. And if you look at all the good I if you look at all the good apps, they don't have a huge name. Maybe internally the name is called My Amazing Calculator. But when it's actually installed, it has a picture of a calculator and it's called Calc. So this name can have spaces and symbols, smiley faces, whatever. Emoji too, I think. There's a description, a blank project that uses Apache Cordova to help you build an app that, is, that targets multiple platforms. That description can be whatever you want inside of the description tag. Don't worry about it, changing it at the moment. But that description would show up like on the App Store or internally in the app itself. We'll write a description for a real app later. Line 5 goes over to explain who is the author. This is the author tag, the author XML tag. Who's the email of the developer? You don't have to change this, but eventually we should put a real email address here to get contacted. href. We should put a website if we have a website. If we don't, we can leave it blank, I suppose. And then inside of the author tag is the name of the organization that created this app. Later on, we'll do something like, I don't know, Victor Apps. I'm going to make a company. The good news about being, in, being an app developer is no one can say yes or no to you. You are a developer the moment you start coding. You're a real app developer. You just need to know the software and the various other little things. But here, nothing will say no. There's no Victor Apps company. Yeah, there is. I just typed it. I exist. So later, we will fill this in properly. We are a real app author. Content. If you noticed in the WW folder, there was index.html. The very first screen that is loaded of our app is defined right here. So if in the folder, WW folder, if I had my starting project called my home screen. My app would not work because config is saying let's launch the first screen of the app index.html. I would recommend to not change this and I would recommend to leave the first starting screen of your app as index. If it's something like home or a date or something, I would recommend index.html always as your starting screen of your app because that's what it is internally. You can, of course, change it if you know what you're doing and if you remember to do it. Access origin, wildcard, don't worry about that just yet. It's basically saying we'll be able to access many uh, origins, so don't worry. Preference splash screen. This is saying let's show a splash screen. If you're using, if you're targeting Windows, let's start at least with Windows 8.1. If you're targeting Windows Phone, use at least Windows 8.1. Cordova plugin, don't worry about that. Then there's all of these allow intents. Our app could access HTTP links. HTTPS secure links. Our app could be set up so that if there's a phone number, we can make the phone number active to launch the phone of the device with the TEL protocol. So we're writing some code, we write a phone number, and instead of HTTP colon whatever, we write TEL and a phone number. And that'll turn on the phone dialer if someone taps it. We have access to the SMS protocol. Send a text message. We have the About screen, and we say, let your friends know about our app. Send them a text. And we write the right code, SMS protocol. It can send a message to your friends from the text message sender of the device. We have the Mail to protocol. We can send an email from the app. And we have Geo. We can um, access uh, Geo. Uh, location, we can access the, the map app of the device. 
Then we have all of these sections of a platform. All of this stuff applies equally to all platforms. If I'm making my iOS app, let me use the telephone. If I'm making my Android app, let me use the telephone. But then we have sections that are only for Android, only for iOS, only for Windows. We can specify some of these properties and we can look them all up at, at Apache. At Cordova.apache, the documentation. We'll look at the documentation in detail later. But we have all of these platform specific bits of code. For Android, if you use the market protocol link, that will launch Google Play, the old Android market app. Well, if you're on iOS, you want to launch the iPhone App Store on your iPhone. So if we use the ITMS, what is that, iTunes Market Space, I will launch the iTunes Store on the iOS. I have another platform of Android. Here is where we're setting the icon for the Android phone. We don't have to change this, but if we saved icons in this folder and gave it different names, we would need to edit this. The easier way, of course, is to create icons for Android, iPhone, whatever, and save them into the folder specified there with the file names specified there so that I don't have to edit this code later. But it's the low, medium, high, and extra high quality versions of the icons. And the iPhone one, the iOS one, is a huge number of them. I would need to create all of these different icons in Photoshop or Microsoft Paint or some software, drop them into the right folder, which we saw previously, and then I have a new unique icon for my app instead of the built-in Cordova icon. Same thing on Windows. Same thing on Windows Phone. Line 65 has the listing about splash screens. We saw where the folder is in the project, and here's the code that accesses them. And iOS and Windows and Windows Phone, then it ends. <coughs> Later on, we will add more properties, more tags to this file, like if I want to lock the orientation of the app. Did you notice? Um, that if you opened up the project in the emulator and tried to do the rotation, it should have rotated and the screen changed orientation. Well, if we want our app to only be locked vertically, um, we would have to write something in the config file to lock orientation portrait. If we wanted to change other features, basic features of the app, we would edit it here in the uh, config XML file. So we will be looking at this um, file in more detail later. And we've taken an overview of, of what a TACO project is. Remember, TACO, Cordova, PhoneGap, they're all basically synonymous with some variations. And we'll get to the details of the variations later. But if I say, let's open our Cordova project, I mean the TACO project. If you go online and do a Google search about something and you get a result that says type phone gap create project, well that's the same as if I have typed TACO create something. It's just different names for basically the same thing with variations. And so this project that we've created and run in the emulator and such, it's just a testing project. We don't really need it. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to wind down the main lecture in a moment. I'm going to upload the videos. Of course, if you want access to the videos, send me an email. I'm going to put these notes, not too many of them, back into the network folder. When we come back next time, we're going to start to look at the next handouts. And then we're going to um, start to see what else we have with Taco. We're going to import our project from last month into this month. I don't want to start from zero. I have a project from last month. 
And if you think about it, any web project you've previously created, if you took the feud class and you learned all of those great techniques there, you can make a project from that class and import it into here. We'll see how exactly later on, but any web project can be imported into Taco and then be deployed to every device as a real app. Any general questions? Okay, that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time until 9.30. If you need any help with anything that went wrong, call me over, and we'll do it again on Thursday.